In this lesson, we're going to go over a few more examples using the compound interest formula. So in the last lesson, we went over a couple of simple examples just using that compound interest formula where a is equal to p multiplied by 1 plus i raised to the power of n. And in both of those cases, the only thing we had to do was calculate the amount that was accumulated after paying a certain percentage of compound interest for a certain amount of time on a principal. And in this lesson, we're going to go over a few more examples, but they are going to be slightly more complicated. Six years after I deposit money into a savings account that pays 12% compound interest per annum, I have nine hundred and eighty six thousand nine hundred and eleven rand and thirty four cents how much did i initially deposit in that account six years ago so here we are given the amount that was accumulated after paying twelve percent of compound interest per year on some principal for six years so 986,911 rand and 34 cents is the amount that we are going to have in that savings account after those six years. And we are being asked the initial amount of money that was deposited into that account that accumulated this much after six years of paying 12% compound interest. So again, let's start out by writing down what we do know. In this case, we have our A. That is the amount that we accumulated after those six years of paying 12% interest. So that amount is here, 986,911 and 34 cents. So 986,911.34. Our principal is what we are trying to work out. That is the initial amount of money that we deposited in our account. Our interest rate is 12%, which we are going to represent as 0.12 in decimal form. And our n, our number of years, is 6 years. So now that we have all of those pieces of information, we can plug that into our compound interest formula, which is a is equal to p times 1 plus i to the power of n. So in this case, we have 986,911.34 is equal to P, which we don't know, times 1 plus 0 0.12 to the power of 6. To simplify this, we can keep this 986,911.34 here. And if we calculate 1.12, 1.12 to the power of 6. I'll just write that down so it's easier. 1.12 to the power of 6. If we just work out what's in these brackets to the power of 6, we are going to get that that is equal to 1.97382p. So I've left a lot of decimal places here, which isn't really necessary. We could round this off, but if we want to get a closer idea of the exact amount that we initially invested, we can leave as many decimal places as possible so that we get as close as possible to the real amount. So if you put 1.12 to the power of 6 in your calculator, you should get 1.97382. And that has to be multiplied by P because of our P over here. So 986,911.34 is equal to 1.9738 P. And to solve for P, we are going to need to divide both sides by 1.97382. So if we take 986,911.34 and divide that by 1.97382, we are going to get P. If you put this into your calculator, you are going to get that P is equal to 500,000. So 500,000 rands is how much we initially deposited into that savings account. And after six years, we ended up with 986,911 rand and 34 cents. 
because we gained a lot of money by gaining 12% interest on this 500,000 rands and it was compound interest per year. So this is our initial amount invested. Let's go over one last example. And this is going to be a bit of a challenging question. Let's say I loan my friend 100 rand at a 10% compound interest rate per annum. At the end of some amount of years, this is unknown, he has to pay me 121 rand. How long did it take to pay me back? So in this case, we know that our principal amount is 100 rand. That is the amount that was loaned out initially. So our P is 100 rand. We know that the interest rate is 10% compound interest per year. So 10% and as a decimal, that's going to be 0 0.10. We know that the number of years is what we are trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out how long it took for him to pay me back. This X amount of years that we have to determine is going to be our N. And we know that the amount that was accumulated after that number of years that we are trying to determine was 121 Rand. So our accumulated amount was 121 Rand. So essentially, after some amount of years paying 10% compound interest per year on the 100 Rand principal, we owed an additional 21 Rand in interest. So let's plug in what we know into our compound interest formula. We know that that formula is A is equal to P times 1 plus I to the power of N. We have 121, that was our A is equal to 100, this was our principal amount, times 1 plus 0 0.10 to the power of n. Now we can simplify this slightly as 100 times 1.10 to the power of n. That's just adding these together in our brackets. We're going to get 1.1. Now since we know we're trying to solve for n, we can simplify this by dividing both sides of this equation by 100. So we get rid of the 100 from this side. So that would be 121 divided by 100 is equal to 1.10 to the power of n. And now you might be stuck over here because there doesn't seem to be a straightforward way for us to calculate the value of this n without going into some logarithms and it could get a little bit complicated. But one thing that we can do is we can try to make this a little bit easier to solve by expressing this 1.10 as a fraction instead of a decimal. We have a fraction over here and it'll be easier for us to deal with this if this is expressed as a fraction as well. So if we're trying to express 1.10 as a fraction, we can recognize that that is going to be the same thing as 1 and 1 tenth. Of course, that's what we started out here. We started out with 1 plus 1 tenth. So 1 and 1 tenth, if we keep our denominator here as 10, we know that that's going to be the same thing as 10 over 10 plus 1 over 10. That's just 1 plus 1 tenth. And that is going to be equal to 11 over 10. So we can express this 1.10 as 11 over 10. And that might make things a little bit clearer. So 121 over 100 is equal to 11 over 10 to the power of n. All we've done here is replace this 1.10 as 11 over 10. Because as we can see, that is the same thing. And now one thing that jumps out to me is that in this denominator we have 10 and here our denominator is 100. We know that 10 times 10 is 100. Over here we have 11 and over here we have 121. 11 times 11 is 121. So both the numerator and the denominator squared are going to give us this numerator and this denominator. 
So just by rephrasing this 1.10 as 11 over 10, we can very quickly see that the value of n here is going to be 2. Because if we square this entire bracket, we are going to get 121 over 100. So n is going to be equal to 2. That is going to be the only way to make these two sides of the equation equal. By our exponent laws, if we have a fraction squared, that is going to be the same thing as 11 squared over 10 squared, which is equal to 121 over 100. So we know that n is going to be equal to 2. This is going to be our final answer. So it's going to take two years for him to pay me back. And in those two years, I gained 21 rand in interest because that initial 100 rand that I loaned to him became the 121 rand after paying 10% compound interest for two years. So that is going to be our final answer.